My name is Phyllis Omido. I'm the Executive Director, Center for Justice, Governance and Environmental Action, and I'm an, an environmental activist. I have worked on the case of Oenohuru since 2009, where I exposed the issue of exposure to lead poisoning for the Oenohuru community. I have brought this case before the Land and Environment Court after I had exhausted all other methods. I had gone to Parliament and to Senate and presented petitions on behalf of the community. Whereas both Senate and Parliament asked that the people of Oenohuru be compensated and that the, people, the environment in Oenohuru be cleaned up. The state agencies responsible have ignored the issue of Oenohuru and the people of Oenohuru have continued to die. We know that we have lost more than 300 children and 50 adults to lead poisoning in Oenohuru. Many of you have seen, have covered this case, sometimes at the mortuary when children died or women died. You have covered this case through the years. It is very disheartening that a few incompetent individuals can decide to take away justice from the people of Unohuru for no reason at all. If you read the judgment that was rendered today, uh -huh. they have upheld all the prayers that we sought. They have said that the Unohuru community was exposed to lead poisoning. They have said that the Unohuru community deserves to be compensated for what they have termed as a disaster that happened in that community. And yet they have gone ahead to say that if they want to be paid, they have to go and start a fresh case at the Environment and Land Court to prove that they were injured. They have apportioned liability 50% uh, to the two corporations and 50% to the state. What method did they use to apportion liability? What, what liability are they apportioning? Secondly, they have taken away the money that was awarded to Center for Justice to remediate the Winohuru community. They have said that we do not have capacity. I, don't, I do not remember at any point where, where we were asked to prove our capacity because Center for Justice has the capacity to do the work that was uh, set out for us. We have experts. We are the ones that have actually been bringing experts into the country to train NEMA on the issue of lead poisoning. Initially, from the time we started, we brought experts from the U.S. to train NEMA. So how is it that today a court can sit and rule that we, do, we are not competent or we do not have the uh, expertise to do this work? We, we, we totally decry this judgment. The people of Oinohuru are disheartened. I have been talking to them ever since this judgment was rendered. Many have lost hope. This is not what the court is supposed to do. The court is supposed to be a hope for the poor. A court is supposed to be somewhere where the poor will run to and get justice. But today they have proved to us that the courts in Kenya can never uphold justice for the poor. They are calling for anarchy. Because what do people do when they have buried their children, buried their wives, and yet someone tells them that they do not deserve justice? What else do they want the people of Oinohuru to do? The people of Oinohuru have upheld the law. They have sought all legal means to resolve this issue. But it looks like it's not possible to get justice through legal means here in Kenya. So we are going to weigh our options from now onwards. How do we want to get justice for the people of Oinohuru? And that is what we are going to do from tomorrow. Thank you. Way forward. So the way forward is that from tomorrow, from tomorrow we are going to be having uh, civil disobedience and protests. We, we, have, we have followed the law up to now. We are no longer going to follow the law. Let them come for us. Let them come for us. Let them come and pick each one of us because it will not be the first time. We are not going to notify anyone about what we are going to do. But we are going to take our country back and we are going to take justice back from today moving forward. And whatever we are going to do is going to spread to every part of this country. It is not about politicians. It is not about anything else apart from justice for the poor and vulnerable in this country. And we have support from the whole country. And this is what we are going to do from tomorrow. If you look through the documents, several entities, including state agencies, 
provided the number of victims. The Ministry of Health was asked to say how many people are, are in Uhuru, and they gave an, an estimate between 3,500 and 5,000. These documents are in court. They asked us and we presented the same. So, how are they differing? Plus, you know, getting the number of people you know, in Uhuru is very easy. You just need to go on your computer and search, and you'll get how many people are there in Uhuru. We provided every evidence in court. We did prevalence studies that covered 3,000 people you know, in Uhuru. And therefore, they, they have not at any point said that our, our, our uh, evidence was in, insufficient. They have, if you look through that ruling, they have upheld, they've said yes, there's enough and sufficient evidence to show that these people suffered harm. But then they go ahead and say, we are not going to compensate them, let, let them go and start the case afresh. It does not make sense, it's corruption in a way. It's corruption that is entrenched in our court, in our court systems. They are, they are deliberately doing this to deny these people and to create avenues for government um, state agencies to eat from this case. It's very sad because this case is about the blood of children. It's about the blood of mothers. There are women who have lost their wombs. They can never get, get babies because of this case. How then do they create avenues for NEMA to go and access taxpayers' money and claim to have done remediation when we know very well that they don't have capacity to do it? You understand? So it's not about how many people are there. The, we provided everything. Our case was solid, and they have acknowledged that in their ruling. Our case was very solid. Otherwise, they would have thrown it out. It's only that they are looking for a mischievous way to ensure that the community does not access justice. This statement was uh, referred like four or five times. Seven times. Do you suspect maybe the judges uh, uh, yes. did the instructions? Exactly. It is very obvious. It is very obvious. If you read that judgment, it is very obvious that they are following instructions from someone. It is not an independent judgment. Because how do they, from the start, they are saying, yes, the evidence is there. Yes, these people have been poisoned. Yes, there is pollution. Yes, metal refinery poisoned these people. Yes, we are portioning blame. Yeah? They said 30% to name a 30%. And then at the end, they say, oh, let's not pay them. Let them go in. So, it's very obvious that they are receiving instructions from elsewhere. This is a corrupt court. They have treated us badly. They have mistreated the people of Oinohuru. They, have, they are basing their, their judgment on fresh hearsay that the uh, lawyers of the state were saying in court. That is not the, 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 uh, what they were supposed to do. They were supposed to review the case that was brought from the Environment and Land Court and advise us where the judge erred in law. Not to come and tell us, uh, EPZ said, and, and NEMA said, that's not why we went to a uh, court of appeal. So they have failed in their duty. They are corrupt and they need to be investigated. No faith in the judiciary? No faith, zero faith in the judiciary. So, so what now that uh, they want this case to be like, tried and fresh, and then the environment and land court, are they living at maybe reducing the amount awarded? Or what, 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 what's the I am not afraid to go back to the Environment and Land Court. Understand this, because our case is solid. And if we go back to the Environment and Land Court, I assure you that we are not asking for 1.3 billion. We are asking for more than 20 billion moving forward. Because the injuries that have been suffered then until now are even worse. Um, these two are standing beside me. They worked for Metro Refinery. They lived in Oinohuru. He needs a, a kidney transplant. Can you quantify that? Two of his children died and his wife from lead poisoning. Can you quantify that? So, telling us that 1.3 billion is too much, they should tell us what they are basing it on. Because we provided the, the harm, we showed, we demonstrated the harm and injury that the community had suffered. We did a prevalence study, a prevalence study which is scientific, that was done by the CDC and Cambry, that quantified the, uh, co co the contribution of the lead smelter to the environment harm in Oinohuru. It showed that the area, using the direction of the wind, the area that had most been affected is the 13.5 acres in Oinohuru. It means everyone in that community suffered pollution. So if they are asking me now to carry 3,000 people, some who are already dead, and take them to, to the environment and land court to prove my case, they are trying to defeat justice. They are 
obviously trying to defeat justice. What they are asking for is preposterous. It's unheard of. No one ever ruled anything like that. I, co I don't have, that is against the law. Which law says that I have to carry 3,000 people to court? It doesn't say that. I have demonstrated, according to the law, that these people were poisoned, these people were harmed, and they have upheld that. But they are obviously under instructions to ensure that that 1.3 is overturned by their masters. Yes, legally, legally we have the option of the Supreme Court. But um, it's like running from the fire, frying pan to the fire. If this, these people want us to go back to the Environment and Land Court, our hands are tied. Because even if we go to the Supreme Court, they'll still ask us to come back to the Environment and Land Court because of the issue of, uh, of compensation. So I'm going to have a meeting with my legal team tomorrow and the Board of Center for Justice. And then we are going to decide whether we are going to put one case at the Supreme Court and one case at the Environment and Land Court. One um, at the Supreme Court to challenge the decision of uh, the Supreme Court, uh, of the Court of Appeal, to apportion 50% liability to a non-existent company. That is very mischievous, so we are going to challenge that. The other thing we are going to challenge at the Environment uh, and Land Court is... Uh, is the 1.3 billion and how we, we managed to because our initial ask if you all remember when we were going to court was 2 billion there's been inflation there's been a lot the the um, the type of damage has changed over the, the years and therefore we are not going to go back there and ask for 2 billion that is madness That is what you call corruption. That is what you call corruption. Corruption uh, is usually very visible. Something that does not make sense usually involves corruption. And this does not make sense at all. Anyone who has studied law will know that this does not make sense. Yeah. Jina langu ni Phyllis Omido, mimi ni mwanaharakati wa mazingira na mkurugenzi mkuu katika shirika la Center for Justice, Governance and Environmental Action. Um, tuko hapa kwa ajili leo tulipokea judgment. Tulipokea uamuzi wa mahakama ya Rufa kuhusu kesi ya Unohuru. Na imetushangaza sana kwa sababu uh, wale judges wa tatu wanasema ya kuwa ni kweli wana kijiji wa Onohuru waliathirika wanasema ni kweli kuwa mashirika ya serikali yalichangia kuathirika kwa watu kwa athirika kwa watu wa Onohuru lakini pale chini wanarudi wanasema hawawezi kupeana fidia kwa watu wa Onohuru kwa maana wanataka watu wa Onohuru warudi tena katika koti ya ya um, mazingira waende kuonyesha ni vipi waliumia ili hali kesi tulipoweka kotini mara ya kwanza ilionyesha jinsi wanakijiji wa Onohuru waliumia. Kwa hivyo hii kesi um, imetuonyesha ya kuwa hakuna imani na mahakama ya rufaa ya hapa nchini. Tuna tumeona kuwa hii hii ni u mischievousness inaitwa nini? Ni ufedhuli wa hali ya juu na tutazidi kupinga hii eh, judgment ambayo tu, uamuzi huu ambao tumepokea leo na tutaendelea katika mahakama ya Supreme Court ili tusikie ni uamuzi gani ambao tutapewa pale lakini pia tutaweka makaratasi yetu katika Environment and Land Court ya kuonyesha jinsi wana kijiji wa Onohuru walidhurika Asante kama wakati umekata rufa inapaswa kutoka kwa nani wamesema ya kuwa uh, asili mia hamsini inafaa kutoka katika serikali mashirika ya serikali ambayo yalichangia katika kuathiriwa kwa watu wa uno huu na uh, asilimia hamsini inatakiwa kutoka kwa hiyo kampuni ambayo ilishafunga na ikaenda kwa hivyo hiyo ni kumaanisha kuwa wananchi wa uno huru watapata asilimia hamsini peke yake 
ya ile pesa ambayo itaamuliwa na koti. Ile nyingine tuseme imepotea kwa sababu ile kampuni ya Metro Refinery ilishaenda kama kuna wale kama kinaotumwa walikuwa na sisi wakati huo kina Oma wanajua ya kwamba ile kampuni wakati ilikuwa inaenda tuliambia serikali hawa watu wame poison au inohurumsu waatilie waende wali facilitate hawa watu kuenda na wakaandika ripoti safi sana ya kusema ile mazingira haijatafuka ile mazingira ni safi hiyo ndio kwa sababu tuliwashtaki na leo hii imekuwa ni mahakama inawatetea wao tena na kuweka ile burden kwa wananchi wa unohuru warudi tena miaka ingine kadhaa kotini ile haifai si haki amtaki watu waonge eh tuko pale barabarani kesho and they are doing it just to